I remember just seeing them all the time, like, who are those guys? They are an anomaly. I don't feel like they purposely have been trying to be mysterious, right? They don't really look like a band. They do just like people who've been sort of let out for a day. Has a rockumentary always been like on the list, your tick list of things you wanted to do? And then how did you know that like Sparks was the group that you wanted to push forward with? Not really. I mean, I, I like, I I think it's the sort of, like the uh, other films that I've done, I, I don't really have a list of things I want to do. It's more like things start to come around by osmosis in a way. And uh, or either with a narrative film, it's usually something I've been thinking about for a long time. In this case, it wasn't something that I necessarily thought about that I should do it, but I started to kind of like say it aloud that somebody should do it. Because I still started to feel as a Sparks fan, having been obsessed with them for like decades, and especially in the last like 20 years, like just really impressed by the fact that they managed to kind of keep forging forward and doing albums that were as inventive and ambitious as anything that in the what's what i mean is like i don't want to even say the word golden period because i think what the sort of film was almost proves is that the golden period is is still going it's like you know the stuff now is as good as the stuff then that was what that was what i kind of felt as a sparks fan and then i found myself kind of in company sort of saying yeah you know like somebody should do a documentary about sparks or like sparks are the greatest, most influential band to not have a documentary about them. And so I kept saying it out loud. And I guess like the candy man, I sort of, once you say it five times, you got to do it. And it was at a Sparks gig in 2017. I was in the balcony with Phil Lord. And again, I said my spiel about somebody has got to make a documentary about Sparks. And Phil said, you should make that movie. So I was like, oh yes, I will. And then I pitched it to Ronald Russell that night. So as soon as I had like said it out loud to them, then it was like, without any idea of how I would finance the movie, <laughs> it'll make it. It was just like, it was like a vocal contract that I, a promise that I had made to Sparks that I would make good on. And now three and a half years later, here we are. Ron and Russell, whoever wants to feel this. So there are certain things that you guys don't talk about in the movie. Like you don't address, you know, and maybe you did talk about them in interviews, but like, how you started playing instruments or if you've ever considered packing it in or like if you guys get in fights or or you know what I mean like and then you even mentioned at a point in the movie like we were worried we gave away too much <laughs> you know um how did you sort of know where to like draw your boundaries or or how much of yourselves you wanted to to show well I think I think we I mean in a certain way we had some discussions with Edgar for, at the beginning and 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 um because I think something that that um, is part of the, you know, I don't know if it's appeal or not part of the appeal, but it's a, a factor with fans, at least of Sparks, is that even though they want to know, they they claim to want to know more. I think part of the thing of not knowing more is maybe kind of alluring to not knowing every little nook and cranny of our of our lives, and so. You know, we had a discussion, you know, had some discussions early on with Edgar, like, oh, is this going to be giving away too much? Or, or if you do give away too much, does it kind of um, lessen, lessen what people who do know the band might think about the band, that there goes the facade or whatever? And Edgar convinced us that, no, that wasn't going to be the case ever. Um, and that, you know, and, and then it was, then Edgar did did his his thing of, you know, choosing what he felt was the most important, what were the most important elements to use in the film, obviously, which was a huge decision because there was so much footage shot. And so what he did choose to keep and what he chose not to keep in the final edit, you know, it it's, uh, seemed to, it, it does tell the entire story in a way that I think we're all really happy with. And so, <clears throat> So it's, you know, it's, it's a, a fine line between kind of telling the story in a complete way, but also not giving away certain things too that, that may, uh, may still remain in the background. Plus we told lots of, we gave away lots of secrets at the very end of the film and, and stuff <laughs> about the, you know, our uh, yeah. seahorse rehabilitation uh, 
center that we have and things like that. So we, we gave away a lot of the, the hot items. They're all really good. And I believed all of them. 100%. Good. Well, you should. Good. You, you took something valuable out of the documentary. Don't, don't <laughs> reveal the shocking end twist. It would be like, no. it's like worthy of the crying game. Don't, don't reveal <laughs> oh, that. Right, right, right. <laughs> Um, so, Ron, the movie that you and Russell wrote, Annette, is opening can. And I'm kind of wondering if you learned, did working on this project make you learn, did you learn anything for Annette? Do you know what I mean? Like, did you go like, oh, what if we did this? Or we should pitch it this way or whatever? Well, I, I mean, actually, we had, we had been working on that previous to actually uh, mm -hmm. having Edgar working on the documentary. So... So, you know, it, it was kind of two, two separate experiences. I mean, we, we, uh, we had had a couple of previous film projects, one possibility with Jacques Tati, and we'd worked on that for, you know, a bit with him. And then another uh, movie musical that, that we had written uh, based on a Japanese manga called My the Psychic Girl that Tim Burton had been involved in. So... You know, I, I think we we learned something about that we we felt more comfortable doing uh, narrative film musicals than actually doing soundtracks for people uh, as one you know just one thing. And but we didn't learn enough to to kind of uh, say maybe we, after two failures maybe we should just pack it in on that and just do our do our albums and you know just um you know so it, it it's it's uh you know we just see we feel like we have some kind of flair for incorporating uh vocal i mean not necessarily not just in pop music but just incorporating vocals into a into a narrative even if the narrative is over two two hours uh it might not be to everybody's taste but you know it it is kind of a method that we've kind of uh uh feels really natural to us maybe what you've learned is all this back end stuff like you're going to be like it really aces at a zoom junket now like you're going to know it backwards and forwards <laughs> that, that, that i think yeah that's true yeah. after today we we got it down yeah and when, when we started the documentary and net was kind of like happening but not like definitely definitely happening and i feel like by the by actually by the time we'd finished like and i was actually then shooting my movie like and during that annette started filming and then when i finished editing my movie I, literally the last bit of filming that we did and the last time i saw ronna russell in person was on the set of annette because as soon as like i knew annette was happening i was like we have to go to brussels we have to shoot on the set of annette because it's the like it's the happy ending of the b plot so we have to be there. So it was actually so weirdly. It was it's it's funny now that like in the summer, like both films, it's kind of like kismet that they're coming out back to back. Yeah, and you know it's 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 perfect in a way. And I can say that I've seen it, and it is amazing. What is more glamorous, rock and roll life or movie life? Because I know your one well, are really that glamorous. We'll <laughs> we'll let you know after the can premiere after July sixth. <laughs> we'll answer your question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>